All right, guys, so uh, here recently I've had quite a bit of interest in my uh, printable patterns for the wallets that I offer on my website. Um, specifically, the Roper template and the Money Clip Bifold template. Um, both of those are still available on the website. It's a uh, printable download, so uh, once you purchase those, it just instantly emails you the uh, file for that so you can print it out uh, at your printer at home. Um, I do want to say on some of these paper templates, it's kind of hard to um, keep a good straight edge on them without the paper, you know, falling apart or wrinkling or whatever. So I do personally, I use, I think it's just like some adhesive fabric spray stuff that I got from Walmart. You can find it about anywhere really. Um, I spray that on some poster board and then I'll stick the template itself to the poster board and then I'll cover that with another layer um, and use uh, just regular shipping clear tape and then I'll cut out my template after that and that helps it kind of give it a little bit more rigidity and you can use it you know over and over again without having too much of an issue there. Uh, in this video specifically I'm going to be talking about the uh, money clip by fold wallet. Um, it's more kind of the more complex style. This is one that's finished up. It's already tooled up and interiors built and all that. It's got the little money clip in it and stuff. That's what I'm going to be working on today mostly. Um, here's one of the ropers in case anybody was interested in that. Same deal. Um, but I got one of these money clip wallets finished up. Got it tooled up and ready to go. Ready for an interior. So I figured I'd take this time to... Uh, kind of make a quick video try to get I'm gonna try to get straight to the point and just make this video as short as possible I don't want to make this some lengthy crazy video or nothing um, just something simple that way if you do get this pattern and you get it and you're like okay this is great I like this but how in the world do I put it together you can kind of follow along with this video maybe it'll help you um, with getting it together and knowing that you got it together correctly and that you're not gonna have any issues um, because if you don't glue it right, um, the interior could potentially over time kind of separate if you're not careful. So, or I've seen a couple of people do it where they glue in the wrong spot and then they can't get their little money clip in there. So I figured this would be the easiest way to kind of help fix that. All right, so what I got here is a Wicket & Craig glazed harness leather. Uh, this is some really beautiful stuff. This is what I use for 99% of my wallet interiors. Uh, it's it's pretty nice to work with. It edges up pretty good. Um, it'll take a die on the edge as well, really good. Um, this is gonna be at a two to three ounce, more on the two ounce for the most part, uh, which is nice for interiors. The thinner you can get, pretty much the better. Um, I do still skive down my interior pockets just to kind of help with overall bulk of everything. Um, I think on this pattern, I'm pretty sure on this one, I have it as an option to where you can either do four or six pockets. On this one in particular, I'm going to be doing the six pocket. That's what I'm going to be doing today. I figured that would kind of cover the whole gist of everything else, even if you were doing the four pockets. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take that original uh, piece that you cut your uh, body out of, same piece for the interior. And I'm just going to trace this out. I might, you know, speed up part of this video and whatnot just to uh, save on time on the video. But all right, same thing for the for the pockets here. I'm just going to line those out. Try to use a straight edge off of the off of the body. That way I'm using as little material as I can possibly use. I really need to, soon I really need to look into getting a clicker press and some dies for these. Because that would uh, that would definitely help me ramp up production time and uh, help out a ton. So I've got two of my uh, bottom pockets cut or drawn in here. I'm just going to go in with my uh, T pockets now. Same thing, I'm just going to butt them up against the, the last line there. Try to get them as straight as you can possibly get. Alright, so now that we've got them all traced out with the uh, 
scratch all, we're just going to cut them all out. We got all our pieces cut out, all our pockets and our body and everything. I'm going to go ahead and punch that hole out for my money clip. And then I'm going to get to uh, beveling these edges and going ahead and getting the pockets, the top of the pockets slicked up and all that good stuff. All right, now that we've got all of our pockets finished up, beveled up, I'm just going to take uh, a little tokenol, kind of dab it. Try not to get it on the uh, front side of the leather too much because it will change the color of it a little bit. And I'm just going to take my little wood slicker here and burnish those down a little bit. Just start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. Being careful, try not to uh, scalp all the way through the pocket. Doing this is just going to help with the overall bulk of the wallet. All right, now that we got all our pockets scabbed down, cut out, and all that good stuff, it's time to start kind of mapping out how our interior is going to lay out. So first thing I do, kind of set that there. Um, I use this double-sided stick tape for the bottom of my pockets here. Excuse the dogs out there barking. I'm sure y'all can probably hear them in the background. They're not so happy about a tractor driving by. So what I do here, I just kind of lay this out where it's gonna bleed. Hold that down, come in here, the pocket's going to sit. Just like that. Bottom's there, and so on and so forth. So now we've got all our pockets, uh, the bottom of the pockets taped in. Um, just brought it over here to the sewing machine real quick. I'm going to show you really quick stitch across the bottom of these to kind of help hold them in place over time so now we got our pockets the bottom of our pocket sewn in i'm just going to come in with a little bit of contact cement this is barges brand you can use well wood or whatever whatever you want to use it doesn't matter to me all in turn it's all going to do the same thing some people like the the weld wood a little better i think it's a little thinner than the barges usually is but just take that dab a little on there I'll spread it just a little bit always kind of spread it out not in you don't want to overly glue the pockets and do the same thing on the opposite side Now on this side, it's kind of hard to get glue in this side without making a big huge mess. So I do just uh, run some double sided tape on the middle. Once that's good and stuck down, we'll just come in with a wing divider here. Kind of mark our stitch line. On each side of that here. You do have to sew this before you sew the uh, interior to the exterior. So remember that. Don't forget this part because if you go ahead and glue it on and all that stuff, you won't be able to get to this to sew this on. All sewn up. Everything's ready for glue. So I've got my body here. And I've kind of got it marked out where my uh, little hallway here will be for your uh, money clip. Just take a little bit of this glue here. Spread a nice little even coat. Try not to get on the inside. Nice little coat there. 
Uh, I did put a little bit kind of at the bottom there. Because I will be sewing that part. Put a little, little bitty spot right there at the top too. That's going to have the body. Try not to move your fingers. And same for your interior. We've got two coats of glue on here. As you can see, they're both good and tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this on here. Try to get it as straight as you can. So that is all stuck on really good. You'll notice too, um, I was talking about cutting your pockets out evenly. I uh, didn't do so good of a job on that. So, well, that's no big deal because we're still doing, we still got to trim it and all that good stuff, which that is why I do leave the uh, access trim allowance is so that when that does happen, it's, it's no big deal. All right, so now you'll see I've got my uh, trim allowance marked and my uh, sew line marked. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this before I do the trim. All right, so we got it sewn up, obviously, as you can see, sewn up. But now, you can tell we've got some really bad looking edges here. Not good. That would not be fun to try to sand. So, the reason why I put this trim allowance on here, which I already had marked out from earlier, is now, to get that sewn out, I'm just gonna take your straight edge, and you can use an X-Acto knife, however you want to cut this out. I prefer the uh, rotary knife. You're just going to cut them straight across there. And this is going to be able to give you a really nice smooth edge to work with. So it's easier once it comes time to, uh, once it comes time to uh, sand in, you're not going to have to sand nearly as much. Just make sure you keep that thing real nice and straight. This would be a bad time to, uh, to mess up. Also, if you don't already, get you a cork back straight edge. That helps it from moving around. Um, before I ever had a cork edge or a cork back straight edge, um, all I had was this one right here, and I had a bunch of issues with it moving around on me at first. Um, if you can't find one, literally all I took did with this one is I took some um, some Herman Oak Veg Tan, and I roughed out both sides of it and attached it to this to where it has rough out here and the rough out helped kind of adhese it to this. You can do that if you can't find a cork back, that does work. But uh, I've got this one now, so I use it more than I use the other. All right, now that we've got all them cut out, just take your uh, corner punch if you have one. If not, just use the uh, the radius that the temp that's on the template to uh, cut that corner out there that out do that on all four corners there kind of nick that one a little bit kinda come back through with your blade and kind of cut that off a little smooth but yep that's uh that's pretty much got that for that part as you can see that uh that gives you a lot better edge to work with so uh, you don't have to do nearly as much sanding and all that good stuff. Pretty much got this wrapped up on that uh on that wallet there. I really hope this uh helps out anybody that may or may not have been having some issues or been a little confused about how to put this together. Hopefully that helps out. Um maybe this reaches a few more people and they want to try it out as well. Uh either way win win so pretty cool with me. Um there is that finished product on that one got it all edge dyed and sanded and burnished and all that good stuff now so it's it's ready to head off to the customer um but i think that's that's about got this video so um if you don't mind uh leaving a like subscribing all that good stuff uh that'll definitely help out liking and commenting obviously helps out the algorithm all that good stuff so That'll help kind of promote the video and get that out there a little more. Um, try to grow my audience a little more on YouTube instead of just Instagram and TikTok and all that good stuff. And as always, if you have any recommendations or anything you 
anything in particular that you want to see, just just let me know and uh, see if I can't get a video made up for it. But other than that, appreciate y'all watching. See y'all next time.